Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the quadratic sequences practice questions. If you need any extra help on quadratic sequences, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash content, so you scroll down to video number 388, there's video tutorials there. I think there's three different video tutorials on how to find uh, the nth term of quadratic sequences and approach quadratic sequences questions. In this video, I'm going to use the approach used in video one or version one, but if you want to use the approaches in version two or version three, feel free to use those and as long as you're getting the same final answer, that's fantastic. But in this video, we're going to look at how to find the answers to these quadratic sequences practice questions. So let's get started. So question number one. Question number one says the first four terms of a quadratic sequence are shown below. And they are 7, 11, 17 and 25. And we've been asked to work out the next term. Well, to get from 7 to 11, we would add 4. To get from 11 to 17, we would add 6. To get from 17 to 25, we would add 8. So the next term, we would add 10, because we're adding 4, then adding 6, then adding 8, then adding 10. So that means that the next term would be 35, and that's it. So the next term in the sequence would be 35. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. So question number two says, the first four terms of a quadratic sequence are shown below, and they are 6, 12, 22, 36. And we've been asked to work out or find the next term. So we've got 6, 12, 22, and 36. So we're adding 6, then we're adding 10, and then we're adding 14. So to get from 6 to 12, we add 6. To get from 12 to 22, we add 10. And to get from 22 to 36, we add 14. So the numbers we're adding each time are getting bigger by 4 each time because we're adding 6, then 10, then 14. So that means our next one will be add 18. And if we do 36 plus 18, we'll find the next term in this quadratic sequence. So 36 plus 18, well, 36 plus 18 will be equal to 54. So that means the next term in the quadratic sequence would be 54. And that's it, so 54. Okay, let's have a look at question number three. So question number three, we've been asked to circle the quadratic sequence. So let's have a look at these sequences and see which one is quadratic. So we've got one, one, two, three, five. Well, that looks like a Fibonacci sequence. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. And then it would be three plus five is eight and so on. So that's not a quadratic sequence. So it's not that one. Our next one, well, it goes one, three, nine, 27, 81. Well, in this sequence, it looks like we're multiplying by three each time. So we're multiplying by three. We're multiplying by three. We're multiplying by three. We're multiplying by three. So this is a geometric sequence. So this isn't a quadratic sequence. So it's not this one and it's not this one. Okay, our next sequence, let's have a look at this next one. One, 5, 11, 19, 29. Well, this could be, let's have a look. So we are adding 4, then we're adding 6, then we're adding 8, then we're adding 10, and then it will be adding 12 and so on. So that is a quadratic sequence. So let's circle it. So it's going to be that one. That's a quadratic sequence. Let's just have a look at our last one to make sure that this one's not quadratic. So we've got 1, 11, 21, 31, 41. So each time we're adding 10, adding 10, adding 10, adding 10, adding 10. So that's a linear sequence or it's an arithmetic progression where we're adding the same number each time. So it's not that one. Okay, let's have a look at question number four. Okay, let's have a look at question number four. So question number four says the first five terms of a quadratic sequence are shown below and we've been asked to work out the next two terms in the sequence and we've got 4, 9, 18, 31 and 48. So we've got this quadratic sequence. Let's find the first inferences and the second inferences and that will help us find the next two terms. So to get from 4 to 9 we would add 5. To get from 9 to 18 we would add 9. To get from 18 to 31, we would add 13. And to get from 31 to 48, we would add 17. Each time what we're adding is getting bigger by four each time. And let's write that down, our second differences. So we're getting bigger by four. What we're adding is getting bigger by four each time. So our second differences would be four, four, four. And that's important with a quadratic sequence, that second difference is always the same. It's always gonna be, in this case, it's always four. It could be always equal to two or one and so on. So we've got this quadratic sequence and we've been asked to find the next two terms. So at this time, instead of adding 17, we're gonna add 20 because each time what we're adding gets bigger by 4 each time and 48 plus 21 will be equal to 69 because 48 plus 21 is equal to 69 and then next we've added 21 so the next time we're going to add 25 because what we're adding gets bigger by 4 each time and so we would do 69 plus 25 so we do 69 plus 25 and that's equal to 94 so our next time will be 94 
We were asked to work out the next two terms in the sequence. So our sequence would go 4, 9, 18, 31, 48, and then it would be 69 and 94. So 69 and 94. And there are next two terms in the sequence. And the reason is what we're adding is getting bigger by 4 each time. So we wanted to find the next number, we would add 29. If we wanted to find the next one, we'd add 33 and so on. Okay, let's have a look at question number 5. Okay, question number five, we've been given the nth term of a quadratic sequence, and it's n squared subtract 2n plus 8, and we've been asked to work out the first three terms of the sequence. So that's quite nice, we just need to substitute n's equal to 1, n's equal to 2, and n's equal to 3, and that would tell us the terms of this quadratic sequence. So let's do that, so let's write down the first term, so the first term. And to find a first term, we just need to let n equal 1. So instead of n squared, it'll be 1 squared, and then subtract. And then we've got 2 times n, so it's going to be 2 times 1. And then we've got plus 8. So let's just work this out. So we've got 1 squared is 1. And then we've got subtract, and 2 times 1 is 2. And then we've still got our plus 8. So if we just work out 1 take away 2 plus 8, that will be the first term in this quadratic sequence. So 1 take away 2 is negative 1, plus 8 is 7. So the first term in this quadratic sequence is 7. Okay, now our second term, so our second term. So to find our second term, we just need to let n equal 2. We need to substitute in the value for 2 for n. So instead of n squared, it'll be 2 squared. And then we've got subtract, and then instead of 2 times n, it'll be 2 times 2, and then plus 8. So 2 squared is 4, and then we're going to subtract, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and then we've got plus 8. And then 4 take away 4 is 0, plus 8 would be 8. So the second term in this quadratic sequence would be 8. So we've got the first term and the second term by substituting in 1 and 2. Now we need to find the third term by substituting in 3. So we're going to let n equal 3. So instead of n squared, it's going to be 3 squared because we're letting n equal 3. And then subtract, and then 2 times 3, and then we've got our plus 8. So 3 squared is 9, and then subtract, and 2 times 3 is 6, and then we've got plus 8. So if we work out 9, take away 6, plus 8, that will be our third term. So 9, take away 6, is 3, plus 8 is 11. So the third term in this quadratic sequence would be 11. So that means that our first three terms in the quadratic sequence would be 7, 8, and 11, and that's it. If we wanted to work out the fourth term, we would let n equal 4. If we wanted to work out the hundredth term, we'd let n equal 100, and so on. Okay, let's look at question number six. So question number six, we've been told the quadratic sequence has an nth term of 2n squared plus 3n subtract 1, and we've been asked to work out the sixth term in the sequence. So we're going to let n equal 6. So let's substitute 6 into our nth term. So we've got 2 times, and then n squared, that'll be 6 squared, and then we've got plus and then we've got 3 times n, so it's going to be 3 times 6, and then subtract 1. So we just need to work this out, and we'll find the sixth term of the quadratic sequence. And it's a calculator question, so we could just type in 2 times 6 squared plus 3 times 6 subtract 1, and that'll give us our answer. I'm just going to do it manually here. So 6 squared, you remember our order of operations, we have to do the squaring first of all. So we've got 2 times, and 6 squared is 36 plus 3 times 6 subtract 1. Now let's do a multiplication, so 2 times 36 would be 72, plus, and then we've got 3 times 6, that would be 18, subtract 1. And 72 plus 18 would be 90, subtract 1 would be equal to 89. So that means the sixth term in this quadratic sequence would be 89. And again, you could work that out on the calculator if you wanted to. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, the nth term of a quadratic sequence is 3n squared, subtract 8n, subtract 20. And we've been asked to work out the 10th term in the sequence. So we're going to let n equal 10. So we've got 3 times 10 squared, substitute in the value 10 here for n, subtract 8 times, and instead of n it will be 10, subtract 20. And we just need to work this out. And it's a non-calculator question. That's important we remember our order of operations. So we need to square first of all. So we've got 3 times and 10 squared is 100. So 3 times 100, subtract 8 times 10, subtract 20. Now we're going to do our multiplications. 3 times 100 is 300. And then we subtract. And 8 times 10 is 80. And then we've got subtract 20. So 300 take away 80 would be 220. Take away another 20 would be 200. So that means the 10th term in this sequence would be 200. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 8. Okay, let's have a look at question number 8. So question number 8 says that the nth term of a sequence is equal to n squared plus 6n subtract 8. And we've been asked to work out the position of the first term in the sequence with a value greater than 100. So we can do this question in a couple of different ways. One approach is to use trial and error, where we let n equal certain values, and we find the first term in the sequence with a value greater than 100. In this video, I'm going to use the trial and error approach for the moment. So here we've got the nth term, so let's let n equal 1 to begin with. So let n equal 1, and if we do that, we get 1 squared plus 6. 
6 times 1, subtract 8, just letting n equal 1. And this is a calculator question, so we can just type this into our calculator and we will get an answer of negative 1. Now we want to find the term in the sequences that's got a value greater than 100, so let's let n equal a larger number, so let's let n equal 5. Let's look at the fifth term in the sequence, so that'll be 5 squared plus 6 times 5, subtract 8, just letting the n equal 5. And whenever we do that, we get an answer of 47, so that's not big enough. So let's now try the seventh term in the sequence, so n equals 7. So we'll do 7 squared and letting n equal 7 plus 6 times 7 so plus 6 times 7 subtract 8 and whenever we work that out on our calculator we get an answer of 83 so still we haven't found the first term in the sequence has got a value greater than 100 now let's let n equal 8 let's find the 8th term in the sequence so if we do 8 squared plus and then we'll have 6 times 8 subtract 8 and whenever we work that out we get an answer of 104 so as you can see here the 8th term in the sequence has got a value of 104 so that is the first term in the sequence that has got a value greater than 100 and the question says right work out the position of the first term so that'll be the 8th term so the 8th term and that's it so question number nine says, a sequence that has an nth term of n squared subtract 6n plus 7. So as you can see, it's a quadratic nth term. I've been asked to work out which term in the sequence has got a value of 23. So we know that whenever we substitute in a certain value for n, we get an answer of 23. So let's let the nth term equal 23. So we would have n squared subtract 6n plus 7 is equal to 23. And if we solve this quadratic equation, we'll then find the value for n, or the values for n. Um, it says which term in the sequence. So it looks like it'll just be one value for n that will be suitable in our question here. So let's solve this quadratic. So whenever we're solving a quadratic, we often want it to equal zero. So let's take away 23 from both sides. So let's subtract 23 and subtract 23. And when we do that, we get n squared subtract 6n of subtract 16 is equal to zero. So we've got n squared subtract 6n subtract 16 is equal to zero, just taking 23 away from both sides of our equation. Now we want to solve this, so let's factorise, so let's put our brackets down, bracket, 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 equals zero, and let's put n in the front of both brackets, and we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 16, and then we'll add together to give us negative 6, and that's going to be negative 8 and positive 2, because negative 8 times 2 would be negative 16, and negative 8 plus 2 would be negative 6, so there are two brackets, so that means either n is equal to 8, or n is equal to negative 2, just figuring out what values for n will make our bracket 0. Now, we're looking at the terms of a sequence here. It wouldn't make sense in this context to have n is equal to negative 2, the negative second term in the sequence, so n can't equal negative 2, so it'll be the eighth term. So the eighth term in the sequence, work out which term in the sequence has a value of 23, that'll be the eighth term. And again, we can check that if we just substitute in n is equal to 8 here, and we do 8 squared subtract 6 times 8 plus 7, we should get an answer of 23. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. Okay, let's have a look at question number 10. So question number 10 says, the sequence is an nth term of n squared plus n subtract 3. I've been asked to work out which term in the sequence has got a value of 87. So what we'll do is we'll let the nth term equal 87. So we'll write down n squared plus n subtract 3 is equal to 87. And if we solve this equation, we should be able to find which term in the sequence has got a value of 87, or terms in some cases, but in this case it just says which term. So what we'll do is we're going to subtract 87 from both sides because we want the right-hand side of of this equation to equal zero. So if we take away 87 from both sides, we'll get n squared plus n, and then we've got minus 3, subtract 87, so that'll be minus 90, and that will be equal to, and 87 take away 87 is zero. So we've now got our quadratic equal zero, we can factorize, so we'll factorize this and see what we get. So let's start off by putting our n's in our brackets, because it's n squared, we'll put n and n. So I'm thinking of 10 and minus 9, because minus 9 times 10 is minus 90, or negative 90, and minus 9 plus 10 is 1. So let's write down plus 10 and subtract 9. So we've got our two brackets, now we want these to equal 0, so that means that either n is equal to negative 10 or n is equal to 9. Now in this case, it wouldn't make sense to have the negative 10th term, so it means that it's the ninth term of the sequence. So which term in the sequence has got a value of 87? It'll be the ninth term, so the ninth term. Okay, let's look at question number 11. So question number 11, we've been told here are the first five terms of a quadratic sequence, and they are 4, 11, 20, 31, and 44. I've been asked to find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this quadratic sequence. 
So again, there's three different approaches in corporate maths which I cover. I cover version one, two, and three, where I use different approaches to find the nth term of a quadratic sequence. In this video, I'm going to focus on using version one. Um, if you want to use version two or version three, feel free to use that and use those videos on corporate maths to help you get that technique and make sure you know how to do them. And then, just as long as you get the same final answer, that's fantastic. So let's start off by writing down the sequence. So we've got 4, 11, 20, 31, and 44. And whenever we're finding the nth term of this quadratic sequence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the first inferences and the second inferences. So the first inferences, to get from 4 to 11, 7, add 7, then add 9, and then add 11, and add 13. So we've got our first differences. Now let's write down our second differences, and these should all be the same for a quadratic sequence. So they are, to go from 7 to 9, we'll add 2. From 9 to 11, 2. And from 11 to 13, 2. So we've got our sequence, our first differences, and our second differences. Fantastic. So we need to find our quadratic nth term. And remember, our quadratic nth term will be something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. So that's our quadratic nth term, and we just need to find the values of a, b, and c. So to find the value of a, let's look at our second differences. Now they're all the same, so I'm just gonna look at this first second difference, which is two. So this second difference is equal to two a. So two a will be equal to two. So that first second difference is equal to two a. The first first difference is equal to three a plus b. And the first term of the sequence would be equal to a plus b plus c. And if you watch that video, that version one video, I'll explain why the first term of the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c, why the first first difference difference is equal to 3a plus b and why the second difference is equal to 2a. So because we know that the second difference is equal to 2a, we've got 2a is equal to 2 and if we divide by 2 and divide by 2 we get that a is equal to 1. So we found a, a is equal to 1, fantastic. Now let's look at our first first difference. So 7 is equal to 3a plus b. So let's write that down. 3a plus b is equal to 7. Now we know that a is equal to 1, so 3 times a would be 3, and then we've got plus b is equal to 7. So we want to find out what b is, so let's take away 3 from both sides of our equation. So take away 3 and take away 3, and we'll get that b is equal to 4. So that means that b is equal to 4, so that means that we're going to have a is equal to 1, so it's going to be n squared. And then we've got b is equal to 4, so it'll be n squared plus 4n. Now we just need to find out what the c is. So we've got a and we've got b. So to find our value for c, we'll look at the first term in the sequence, and that's a plus b plus c. So a plus b plus c, so a plus b plus c is equal to 4. And a is equal to 1, so we've got 1. And then we've got plus b, which is equal to 4. And then we've got plus c, which is c. And that's equal to 4. And 1 plus 4 on this left-hand side, 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. So we'll have 5 plus c is equal to 4. And we want to find out what c is, so we want to get rid of this 5. So we're going to take away 5 and take away 5. And on the left-hand side, we'll be left with c. And on the right-hand side, we've got 4. Take away 5 is equal to negative 1. So that means that our nth term for this sequence would be equal to, I'm just going to write it down here, up here. So we know that a is equal to 1. So instead of writing 1n squared, I'm just going to write n squared. And then we've got b is equal to 4, so it'll be plus 4n. And then our c is equal to negative 1 or minus 1, so we've got minus 1. So that means the nth term for this sequence would be n squared plus 4n subtract 1 and that's it now that's using version 1 if you want to use version 2 or version 3 feel free to watch those videos and use those techniques but you should get the same answer okay let's have a look at question number 12 so question number 12 says here are the first five terms of a quadratic sequence and they are 4 10 18 28 and 40 and we've been asked to find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the quadratic sequence so let's write down our sequence 4 10 18 28 and 40. And remember the nth term of the quadratic sequence would be something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. And we want to find the values of a, b and c. So let's write down our first differences and second differences. So our first differences, and then we're adding 8, and then we're adding 10, and we're adding 12. Then our second differences would be, well, 2, 2 and 2. And they're all the same, so that's fantastic. So now our second differences, this would be equal to 2a. Our first first difference is equal to 3a plus b, and our first term in the sequence would be equal to a plus b plus c. Now we just need to work out what values a, b, and c are. So let's look at this, our second differences. So we've got the 2a is equal to 2, divide by 2 and divide by 2, and we'll find that a is equal to 1. So that's fantastic. Now let's look at our first first difference. So we've got the 3a plus b is equal to 6. Now a is equal to 1, so we've got 3 times 1 is equal to 3, plus b is equal to 6. So if we take away 3 and take away 3, we'll find that b is equal to 3. 
So we find A and we find B. Now we need to find C. And remember the first term of the sequence is A plus B plus C. So that means that A plus B plus C is equal to 4. And A is equal to 1, so we've got 1 plus, and B is equal to 3. And then we've got plus C, and C is what we're trying to find. And that's equal to 4. Now 1 plus 3 is equal to 4, plus C is equal to 4. Now as you can see here, we've got 4 plus C is equal to 4, so C must be 0. So if we take away 4 and take away 4, we're going to get that C is equal to 0. So that's great. So we know the values of A, B, and C. So that means that our nth term for our quadratic sequence would be, instead of a n squared, it would be 1n squared, or just n squared. And then plus b n, but b is equal to 3, so it would be plus 3n. And then c is equal to 0, so I'm not going to write plus 0, so that means our nth term is just n squared plus 3n, and that's it. Okay, let's look at question number 13. So question number 13, we've been given a quadratic sequence and we've been asked to find the nth term of that quadratic sequence. So let's write down the sequence 9, 17, 29, 45 and 65. And if we write down the first inferences, they will be 8, then we've got 12, and then we've got 16, and finally we've got 20. So we're adding 8, adding 12, adding 16, and adding 20. And then if we write down our second differences, so in other words, if we look at what we're adding, seeing what they're getting bigger by each time, so we're adding 8, then 12, then 16, and then 20, so we, they're getting bigger by 4 each time. So the number we're adding is increasing by 4 each time. And remember, the nth term of a quadratic sequence is something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. And we just need to find the values of a, b, and c. Okay, so remember our second difference is equal to 2a, so this is equal to 2a. Our first first difference is equal to 3a plus b, and our first term of the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c. And we'll use that information to find the values of a, b, and c. So in terms of our second differences, we've got the 2a is equal to 4. And if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we get that a is equal to 2. So that means a is equal to 2. So in this case, it's going to be 2n squared. Next, if we look at our first first inference, we've got 3a plus b is equal to 8. And we know that a is equal to 2. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus b is equal to 8. So if we take away 6 and take away 6, we'll get that b is equal to 2. So it means the b is equal to 2 as well. So we're going to write instead of plus bn, we'll write plus 2n. And then finally, we just need to find our value for c. So if we look at the first term in this sequence, we've got a plus b plus c is equal to 9. And a is equal to 2, and b is equal to 2, and then we've got plus c, and that's equal to 9. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, plus c is equal to 9, and then if we take away 4 and take away 4, we get the c is equal to 5. So then we'd have plus 5. So that means that the nth term for the sequence is 2n squared plus 2n plus 5. And that's it. Okay, let's look at question number 14. So question number 14, we've got our sequence, our quadratic sequence, and we've been asked to find the nth term of the sequence. So let's write down our sequence, which is negative 3, 3, 13, 27 and 45. So we've got our sequence and we want to find the nth term which is in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. So let's find our first differences and our second differences. So our first differences, well to get from negative 3 to 3 we would add 6. To get from 3 to 13 we would add 10. To get from 13 to 27 we would add 14. And to get from 27 to 45 we would add 18. So we've got our first differences. Now let's see what they're getting bigger by each time. So in other words we're looking at what we're adding and seeing what that's getting bigger by each time. And that's getting bigger by 4. So 4, 4 and 4. So in terms of our second differences that's equal to 2a. Then we've got our first first inference, that's equal to 3a plus b. And then our first term in the sequence, that's equal to a plus b plus c. So let's work out the values of a, b, and c. So we've got 2a is equal to 4. And if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we get that a is equal to 2. Next, if we look at our first first difference, we've got 3a plus b is equal to 6. So remember, a is equal to 2, so we've got 3 times a and 3 times 2 is 6 plus b is equal to 6, so b must be 0, take away 6 and take away 6, and we get b is equal to 0. And finally, we've got a plus b plus c is equal to negative 3, so that means that a plus b plus c is equal to minus 3. a is equal to 2, then we've got plus b, which is 0, and then we've got plus c, that's equal to minus 3. Now, 2 plus 0 is 2, and then plus c is equal to negative 3, and then if we take away 2 and take away 2, we get that c is equal to negative 5. So it means that the value for a is 2, so that means it's going to be 2n squared. The value for b is 0, so instead of writing plus 0n, I'm just going to leave that term out, because 0 times anything is 0. And then we've got plus c, and c is negative 5, so we've just got to take away 5. 
So that means the nth term of this sequence would be 2n squared subtract 5. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 15. So question number 15, we've been given a quadratic sequence and we've been asked to find the nth term. So remember, the nth term is in the form a n squared plus b n plus c. And we want to find the values of a, b, and c. And to do that, we'll write down the sequence, which is negative 3, negative 2, 1, 6, 13. Let's see what we're getting bigger each time. So to get from negative 3 to two, negative 2, we would add 1 to 1. To get from negative 2 to 1, we would add 3. To get from 1 to 6, we'd add 5. And to get from 6 to 13, we would add 7. So that means our first inferences are 1, 3, 5, 7. Now let's consider our second differences. So in other words, what's happening to the numbers we're adding each time? And they're increasing by 2. So the second difference would be 2, 2, and 2. So we've now got our first differences and our second differences. Let's find our values of a, b, and c. So our second differences are equal to 2a, so that's equal to 2a. Our first first difference is equal to 3a plus b. And our first term in the sequence would be equal to a plus b plus c. So let's find our values of a, b, and c. So let's consider our second differences. We've got 2a is equal to 2. So that means if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we get that a is equal to 1. So that means it's just going to be n squared. Now, if we look at our first first difference, we've got 3a plus b is equal to 1. Now, a is equal to 1, so we've got 3 times 1. So that's 3 plus b is equal to 1. And if we take away 3 and take away 3, we get that b is equal to negative 2. So it's going to be minus 2n. And finally, for the value of c, we've got that the first term in the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c. So a plus b plus c is equal to minus 3. A is equal to 1, so we've got 1. And then we've got plus b. b is equal to negative 2. So instead of writing plus negative 2, I'm just going to write subtract 2. And then we've got plus c. And that's equal to minus 3. 1 take away 2 is minus 1 plus c, and that's equal to minus 3. Now we want the c on its own, so let's add 1 to both sides, so add 1 and add 1, and we'll get c is equal to, and minus 3 plus 1 will be minus 2, so it'll be minus 2. So that means that the nth term of the quadratic sequence is n squared subtract 2n subtract 2, and that's it. Okay, let's look at question number 16. So question number 16, we've been told here are the first four terms of a quadratic sequence, and we've got 10, 20, 38, and 64. And we've been asked to find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the quadratic sequence. So remember, a quadratic sequence is something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. And let's write down our sequence of 10, 20, 38, and 64. And let's write down our first differences. So we're adding 10, then adding 18, and then adding 26. So that means our first differences are 10, 18, and 26. So now let's find our second differences. And to find our second differences, well, we just look at our first differences, and they're getting bigger by 8 and 8. So the second difference would be 8. Now let's find our values of a, b, and c. So in terms of our second differences, this one will be equal to 2a. In terms of our first first difference, that would be equal to 3a plus b. And then finally, our first term in the sequence would be a plus b plus c. So let's work out the values of a, b, and c. So using our second differences, we've got 2a is equal to 8. And then if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we get that a is equal to 4. So we've got a is equal to 4. So that's going to be 4n squared. Now, if we look at our first first difference, we've got 3a plus b is equal to 10. a is equal to 4, so 3 times 4 is 12, so we've got 12 plus b is equal to 10. And if we take away 12 and take away 12, we get that b is equal to negative 2, so it's going to be minus 2n. And finally, the first term in the sequence is equal to 10, so that's a plus b plus c, so a plus b plus c is equal to 10. And a is equal to 4, so we've got 4. And then we've got plus b. b is minus 2, so instead of writing plus minus 2, I'm just going to write minus 2. And then we've got plus c, and that's equal to 10. Now, 4 take away 2 is equal to 2, and then we've got plus c, and that's equal to 10. Now, we want to find out what c is, so we're going to take away 2 and take away 2, and we get that c is equal to 8. So we've got our values of a, b, and c. So that means we've got 4n squared, subtract 2n, and then we've got plus 8. And that is our nth term for our quadratic sequence, 4n squared, subtract 2n, plus 8. Okay, let's have a look at question number 17. So question number 17, we've been given the first four terms of a quadratic sequence, and they are 7, 5, 1, and minus 5. We've been asked to find in terms of n the nth term of the quadratic sequence. So let's write the sequence down. We've got 7, 5, 1, and minus 5. And let's find our first differences. So to get from 7 to 5, we're going to take away 2. 
To get from 5 to 1, we would take away 4. And to get from 1 to minus 5, we're going to take away 6. So we've got our first inferences. Now let's find our second inferences. So we're going down by 2, so it's going to be minus 2. And we're going down by 2 again, so it's going to be minus 2. So that's fantastic. So remember, our nth term is something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. And we want to find the values of a, b, and c. So let's look at our second inferences. So that would be equal to 2a. Our first first inference would be equal to 3a plus b. And our first term in the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c. So let's look at our second inferences. 2a is equal to negative 2. So if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we get that a is equal to minus 1. So a is equal to minus 1, so it's going to be minus 1n squared or just minus n squared. We don't need to write minus 1n squared. Now, if we look at our first first inference, we've got 3a plus b is equal to minus 2. Now, a is equal to minus 1, so 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 plus b is equal to minus 2. Now we want to get the b on its own, so we're going to add 3 and add 3, so we get b is equal to, and minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So we've got, instead of plus bn, we're going to write plus 1n, or I would just actually write plus n, instead of writing plus 1n. And finally, to get our c, we're going to look at the first term in the sequence, and that's a plus b plus c is equal to 7. And a is equal to minus 1, so we've got minus 1, and then we've got plus b, which is plus 1, and then we've got plus c is equal to 7. Don't know why that plus n went so low. I'll just put it there. Plus. Okay. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0, so we've got 0, plus c is equal to 7, and that means that c is equal to 7. So that means it would be plus 7. So that means the nth term of this quadratic sequence would be minus n squared plus n plus 7, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 18. So question number 18, we're told here are the first five terms of a quadratic sequence and they are minus 5, minus 4, 3, 16, 35. I've been asked to work out the hundredth term in the sequence. So we could just carry the sequence on, but we haven't really got time for that, particularly as the question is only a four mark question. So let's find the nth term and then substitute in the value for 100 for n. So the nth term, well, let's write down our sequence. We've got minus 5, minus 4, 3, 16, and 35. And let's write down our first inferences. So to get from minus 5 to minus 4, we would add 1. To get from minus 4 to 3, we would add 7. To get from 3 to 16, we would add 13. And to get from 16 to 35, we would add 19. So there are first inferences. And our second difference is we're going up by 6, we're going up by 6, and we're going up by 6. So we've got our sequence, our first differences, and our second differences. And remember, our nth term is something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. Now, to find our a, we're going to look at our second difference, that's 2a. To get our b, we'll look at our first first difference, and that's 3a plus b. And to get our value for c, we'll look at the first term in the sequence, that's a plus b plus c. So we've got that 2a equals 6, and if we divide by 2 and divide by 2, we'll get that a is equal to 3. So that means it's 3n squared. Now let's look at our first first inference. So we've got 3a plus b is equal to 1. Now a is equal to 3, so we've got 3 times 3 is 9. So we've got 9 plus b is equal to 1. And if we take away 9 and take away 9, we'll get b is equal to 1 take away 9. It would be minus 8, so it's going to be minus 8n. And finally, to get the value for c here, we're going to look at our first term in the sequence. That's a plus b plus c, and that's equal to negative 5. And we know the value for a is equal to 3, so we've got 3. And then we've got plus b, and b is equal to negative 8. So instead of writing plus minus 8, I'm just going to write minus 8. And then we've got plus c, and that's equal to minus 5. 3 take away 8 is equal to minus 5, and then we've got plus c is equal to minus 5. To get rid of this minus 5, we'll add 5 to both sides, so we're going to add 5 and add 5. Minus 5 plus 5 is 0, so we've got c is equal to, and on the right-hand side we've got minus 5 plus 5 is 0, so c is equal to 0. So that means the nth term of the sequence is 3n squared subtract 8n. Now we've been asked to find the hundredth term in the sequence. So let's substitute in 100 here and find what the hundredth term in the sequence would be. So let's let n equal 100. So we get 3 times 100 squared subtract 8 times 100. 100 squared would be 10,000 times 3 would be 30,000. So that's 30,000. And then we've got subtract and 8 times 100 would be 800. And if we just do 30,000 take away 800, that's equal to 29,200. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 19. So question number 19, we've been given a pattern of tile, so we've got pattern 1, pattern 2, and pattern 3. I've been asked to write down an expression for the number of tiles in pattern n. And in pattern 1, we've got 6 tiles. 
In pattern two, we've got four, eight, 12 tiles. And in pattern three, we've got five, 10, 15, 20 tiles. And so that's our pattern where we've got six tiles, 12 tiles, and 20 tiles. And we've been asked to write down an expression for the number of tiles in pattern N. So let's write down our sequence. So our sequence would be six, 12, 20. And if we were to do one more in the next one, it would have, well, it would have one, two, three, four, five rows. Of one, two, three, four, five, six in it. Five times six would be 30. So the pattern four would have 30. So our next number will be 30. And if we write down our first inferences, our first inferences would be to get from six to 12, we would add six. To get from 12 to 20, we would add eight. And to get from 20 to 30, we would add 10. And then our second inferences are, well, if we look at our first inferences, they get bigger by two and by two. Now let's find out our values of A, B, and C. Remember, we've been asked to find the expression for the number of tiles in pattern N, so that's the nth term, which is in the form of A N squared plus B N plus C. So our second difference is that's going to be equal to 2A. Our first first difference, so this is going to be equal to 3A plus B. And our first term in the sequence would be equal to A plus B plus C. So if we look at our second differences, we've got the 2a is equal to 2. So 2a is equal to 2. If we divide both sides by 2, we get a is equal to 1. So instead of a n squared, it's going to be 1n squared or just n squared. Now let's get a value for b. So we want to look at our first first difference. So we've got 3a plus b is equal to 6. And a is equal to 1. So we've got 3a, that's 3 times 1. That's 3 plus b is equal to 6. And if we take away 3 and take away 3, we get b is equal to 3. So it's going to be plus 3n. And finally, we'll want to find the value for C. So our first term in the sequence is A plus B plus C. So that's A plus B plus C is equal to 6. And A is equal to 1. So we've got 1 plus B, which is 3. And then plus C, which is what we're trying to find. And that's equal to 6. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus C is equal to 6. If we take away 4 and take away 4, we get C is equal to 2. So then it would be plus 2. So that means the number of tiles in pattern N would be N squared plus 3N plus 2. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 20. So question number 20 says the nth term of a sequence is n squared plus 3n. And we're told the two consecutive terms in the sequence have a difference of 38. Work out the two terms. So we're trying to find out which two terms have got a difference of 38. Now we could use trial and error, but it could be that the terms in the sequence are quite large ones. It could be, for instance, be the 62nd and 63rd term in the sequence. And trial and error would take a long time. So I'm going to use an algebraic approach here to find which two terms in the sequence have got a difference of 38. So we know that the nth term is n squared plus 3n. So that's the nth term. So the nth term. So the nth term is equal to n squared plus 3n. So if we were to look at the next term in the sequence, that would be the next one along. So instead of being the nth term, it would be the n plus 1th term of the sequence. And then that would be equal to, and instead of having n, we're going to have n plus 1. So we'd have n plus 1 squared plus 3 times. And instead of n, it would be n plus 1. So that would be the n plus 1th term in the sequence, the next term in the sequence. So we've got two consecutive terms. Now here, let's expand and simplify this. So we've got n plus 1 squared, that means n plus 1 multiplied by itself, so n plus 1 times n plus 1, and then we've got plus, and let's expand our brackets here, we've got 3 times n, that's 3n, and 3 times 1 is 3. And now let's expand these brackets, so we've got n times n, that's n squared, we've got n times 1, that's going to be plus n, we've got 1 times n, that's plus n, and we've got 1 times 1 is plus 1, and we've still got our plus 3n plus 3 on the end. And now let's just simplify this, so in terms of our n squared terms, we've just got n squared. Now let's look at our n terms, or the terms involving n. So we've got n plus n plus 3n, that's going to be plus 5n. And now let's look at our numbers, we've got 1 plus 3, that's plus 4. So we've got the nth term is equal to n squared plus 3. And we've got the next term, the n plus 1th term of the sequence would be n squared plus 5n plus 4. And we're told that their difference is equal to 38. So that means if we take them away from each other, that's going to be equal to 38. So let's do that and see what we get. So I'm just going to change color of pen here and I'm going to do this up here. So we're going to do n squared plus 5n plus 4. And we're going to take away n squared plus 3n. And that's equal to 38. And whenever we do that, let's see what we get. So we've got n squared, take away n squared, but they're going to cancel out, that's going to be 0. We've got 5n, take away 3n, so it's going to be 2n. And then finally, we've got 4, take away, and there's no numbers to take away here, so it's just going to be 2n plus 4. 
And then on the right hand side, we've got that's equal to 38. And if we solve this, we'll be able to find the nth term, and then we'll know what the n plus 1th term is, and then we'll know the two consecutive terms. So let's solve this. So let's take away 4 and take away 4. So we're going to have 2n is equal to 34 and divide by 2 and divide by 2 and we get that n is equal to 17. So I mean the n is equal to 17. So that's the 17th term and this would be the 18th term. So the two terms in the sequence that have got two consecutive terms in the sequence that have got a difference of 38 would be the 17th term and the 18th term. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 21. So question number 21 says, here's a tile, and we've got this hexagon, or it looks like a regular hexagon, and we're told here's a sequence of patterns made from these tiles. So we've got pattern one with one tile, so it's got one tile. We've got pattern two, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles, so it's got seven tiles. And we've got pattern three, which has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 tiles. And we've been asked how many of these tiles are needed to make pattern 10. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find out how many of these tiles are needed for pattern 10. So we could do this in a couple of different ways. We could carry on the sequence and we could find out how many tiles are in pattern 10. We could carry it on by drawing them. That would take ages. We could carry it on by working out what's the pattern in the number of tiles and then carry on the pattern that way. Or we could do it by working out the nth term. And I'm gonna use that approach. I'm gonna work out the nth term. So we're going to find the nth term of this sequence, and we've got the sequence 1, 7, 19. It would be quite useful if we had the next term, and as you can see, we're adding 6 and adding 12, so it's going to be add 18, which would be equal to 37. If you want to check that, you could draw out this, the next pattern by adding on hexagons around the outside of this pattern and seeing how many you would have. Or another way, if you want to check it's 37, is to just look at the pattern where you've got 1, and then you've got here, you've got 2 in this column, then 3, then 2, so 3, then 2. Here you've got 3, four, five, four, and three, just looking at how many hexagons are in each column. So the next one would have, and as you can see, it starts with one, then two, then three, so then it's up with four, five, six, seven, six, five, four, and if you add those together, you would get 37 and so on. Um, or you could just look at the numbers and see it's adding six, adding 12, adding 18. Okay, so we wanna find the nth term, so each time, let's find our first differences. We've got six, 12, and 18 and our second differences well each time the numbers were that we're adding are getting bigger by 60 times so our second differences are 6 and 6. So we've got our sequence our first terms and our second terms let's work out our values for a b and c because remember we're looking for something in the form of a n squared plus b n plus c and then we're going to substitute in n's equal to 10 and find the nth term of this pattern. You could just carry it on if you wanted to in this question. So you could just add on 24, add on 30 and so on. Um, but I'm going to use this approach. So that means that our second difference is equal to 2a. Our first first difference is equal to 3a plus b. And our first term in the sequence is equal to a plus b plus c. So we've got 2a is equal to 6. So that means that a is equal to 3, dividing both sides by 2. So a is equal to 3, so it's 3n squared. Next, let's find our value for b. So we've got 3a plus b is equal to 6. So 3a plus b is equal to 6. And a is equal to 3, so we've got 3 times 3. That's 9 plus b is equal to 6. And if we take away 9 and take away 9, we get that b is equal to minus 3. So it's going to be minus 3n. And finally, we'll want to find the value for c. So if we look at the first term of the sequence, we've got a plus b plus c is equal to 1. And a is equal to 3. B is equal to minus 3, so instead of writing plus minus 3, I'm just going to write minus 3. And then we've got plus C is equal to 1. 3 take away 3 is 0, so you've got just C on its own is equal to 1. So C is equal to 1, so it's going to be plus 1. Now in this question, we're asked to find the number of tiles needed in pattern number 10. So we're going to let N equal 10. So that would be, if we work that out, we're going to get that's equal to 3 times, and instead of N squared, it'll be 10 squared. Subtract 3 times 10 plus 1. 10 squared is equal to 100 times 3 is 300. Subtract 3 times 10, so that's subtract 30, and then we've got plus 1. 300 take away 30 is 270, and then we've still got plus 1. So the answer would be 271, and that's it. And if you work that out in the calculator, you get the same answer. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question number 22. So question number 22, we'll be told that the nth term of a quadratic sequence is a n squared plus c, where a and c are integers, and the second term in the sequence is 16, and the fifth term in the sequence is 163. And we've been asked to work out the values of a and c. 
Now here we've got the second term is 16. So that means that here we've got n's equal to 2. And if we substitute that into the nth term, that would be equal to 16. And here we've got the fifth term. So if we let n equal 5 and substitute that in, we get 163. So that's going to be a really important bit of information in this question. So let's actually do that. So we know that the second term of the sequence is 16. So if we let n equal 2 and substitute that into the nth term, we know that the result would have to be equal to 16. So let's do that. Let's let n equal 2. So we're going to get a times n squared. So it's going to be 2 squared. And then we've still got plus c. And the result would be equal to 16. Now 2 squared is 4. And we've got a times 4. And I normally put the numbers at the front. So it'll be 4a plus c is equal to 16. And that's one equation. Um, in this question, we're going to be using simultaneous equations. Our second equation, so we've got the fifth term is equal to 163. So we're going to let n equal 5, the fifth term, and substitute that into the nth term and put the result equal to 163. So we've got a n squared, and n's equal to 5, so it's going to be a times 5 squared. And then we've got plus c, and that's going to be equal to 163. Now, 5 squared is 25, so it's going to be a times 25. Now, we put the numbers at the front, so it's going to be 25a plus c is equal to 163. So we've now got 4a plus c is 16, and we've got 25a plus c is equal to 163. So they're two simultaneous equations, and we can solve them to find the values of a and b. So let's do that. So let's write our two simultaneous equations together. I'm going to write this one above the other one, because just because these have got larger numbers, and that's going to be quite useful. So let's write that out. 25a plus c is equal to 163, and we've got the 4a plus c is equal to 16. Now, the reason I've written this one above this one is because we've got plus c and plus c. So that means if we subtract the two equations, the c's will be eliminated. They will cancel out. c take away c is 0. And if we do 25a take away 4a, that's 21a. c take away c is 0. And then on the right-hand side, we've got 163 take away 16. And 163 take away 16 would be equal to 147. So that means that 21a is equal to 147. And if we divide by 21 and divide by 21, we get that a is equal to 7. So we've got a is equal to 7. Fantastic. So now we've got a is equal to 7. And we can substitute that into one of our equations and find c. And I'm going to choose the bottom one here. This 4a plus c is equal to 16. So 4 times a. So let's write down 4a plus c is equal to 16. 4 times a, a is 7. 4 times 7 is 28 plus c is equal to 16. We want to get rid of this 28, so let's take away 28 and take away 28. 28 take away 28 is 0, so we're left with c. And on the right-hand side, we've got 16 take away 28, which would be minus 12. So we've got the a is equal to 7, and c is equal to minus 12. And the question asks us to find the values of a and c, so a is equal to 7, and c is equal to negative 12, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 23. And question number 23 is quite similar to question number 22, uh, where we've got the nth term in the form of a n squared plus b n. So we've got these values of a and b that we don't know. And we've been given the second term in the sequence, which is negative 4. And we've been given the sixth term in the sequence, which is 16. We've been asked to find the values of a and b. So we know the second term is minus 4, so let's let n equal 2, because it's the second term. And let's substitute that into the nth term and put it equal to minus 4. So that means a times n squared. So a times, instead of n squared, is going to be 2 squared plus. And then here we've got b times n, and n is equal to 2, so it's going to be b times 2. And let's just simplify this. 2 squared is equal to 4, and then we're going to do a times 4, so that'll be 4a. And then we've got plus, and instead of b times 2, let's write 2b. So we've got 4a plus 2b, and we know that the second term of the sequence is equal to negative 4, so it's going to be equal to negative 4. So that's our first equation. Now the sixth term is equal to 16. So that means that n is equal to 6, the sixth term, and that's equal to 60. So let's substitute 6 into the nth term. So a, so it's a times 6 squared, because it's n squared, and n is equal to 6, so that's 6 squared, plus, and then we've got b times n. n again is equal to 6, because it's the sixth term, so b times 6. Now, 6 squared is equal to 36, and we're going to times that by a, so it's going to be 36a. And then we're here we've got plus, and then we've got b times 6, and so let's put the 6 in front, so it's going to be 6b. And we know that the sixth term is equal to 60, so it's going to be equal to 60. So we've got two equations. We've got 4a plus 2b is equal to negative 4, and we've got 36a plus 6b is equal to 60.
So let's write down our two equations. So we've got our two equations, one and two, and we want to be able to eliminate or cancel out one of the letters. So if we multiply equation one by three, if we do three times equation one, because that would give us our six B. If we times all these terms by three, we'd have six B. And we'd have two equations with six B in it, and then we could cancel them out. Four A times three is 12 A. We had 2b, we times it by 3 to get 6b, so it's going to be plus 6b. And then finally, we had minus 4, we're times it by 3, so it'll be minus 12. So we've now got two equations, both with 6b. So we've got this equation, our equation 2, which is 3a plus 6b is equal to 60. And we've got this equation, which is 3 times equation 1, which is 12a plus 6b is equal to minus 12. And they've both got 6b, so if we take them away from each other, subtract, the b's will cancel. So 36a take away 12a is 24a. 6b take away 6b is 0, they cancel out. And then on the right hand side, we have 60 subtract minus 12. And 60 subtract minus 12, well, 60 minus minus 12, the, that's going to be plus, so that's going to be 60 plus 12, which would be 72. Now we want to find out what a is, so we're going to divide by 24 and divide by 24, and that would give us 24a divided by 24 would just be a, and 72 divided by 24 would be 3, so a is equal to 3. So that's fantastic. We now know that a is equal to 3. So let's substitute that into equation 1 and see what we get. So sub a equals 3 into equation 1 and see what we get. So we had 4a, so that's 4 times a, so 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2b is equal to minus 4. Now we want to find out what b is, so let's take away 12 and take away 12. And we'd have, on the left hand side, we're taking away 12 to get rid of the 12, so we're just left with 2b. And on the right hand side, we have minus 4, take away 12 is minus 16. Now we want to find out what b is, so let's divide by 2 and divide by 2, and then we'll be left with b is equal to, and half of minus 16 would be minus 8. So we've got that a is equal to 3, and b is equal to minus 8, or negative 8. And the question said to work out the values of a and b, so a is equal to 3, and b is equal to minus 8. That's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 24. So question number 24 says, prove every term in the sequence n squared minus 4n plus 21 is positive. And whenever I'm doing a question like this, I really like to use a topic called completing the square. And if you've seen completing the square before, fantastic. And if you haven't, if you go to corporatemaps.com and scroll down to, I think it's video six or eight, around about that part, it's quite early, uh, maybe 10, 12, around that region, you'll see a topic called completing the square. And completing the square is a really useful topic and it's really useful whenever you do dealing with quadratics and it's perfect for this topic or for this question here. So if we've got something in the form of n squared minus 4n plus 21, we're going to use completing the square in red in a different form. And I'm going to presume now that you've watched that video and I'm just going to do completing the square on this and I'm going to show you how we can use that to show that every term in the sequence is positive. So let's write down our n squared minus 4n plus 21. And we're going to do completing the square in this, so let's open up our brackets, and we're going to write n. And then we're going to look at the coefficient of n, so the coefficient of n is the number in front of the n, which is minus 4, and we're going to half that number. And half of minus 4 is minus 2, so we're going to put minus 2, we're going to close brackets, so we've got n minus 2, and then we're going to write squared. So what we've done is we've written n with half the coefficient of n, so we've half that minus 4 to get minus 2, and then we've closed brackets and written squared. Next, we're going to take away whatever this number is squared. Now minus 2 squared, well minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, so we're then going to write minus 4. Whatever this number is squared, you take it away. So minus 2 squared is 4, and then we're going to write down minus 4. So now, then we've got our minus 4, and then finally we're going to write our plus 21 on the end. Whatever the number is here, you just put it on the end. So we've got plus 21, so we're going to write plus 21. So we're nearly finished in terms of completing the square. So we've got n minus 2, close bracket squared, minus 4 plus 21. We can just simplify this part. So we've got n minus 2, close bracket squared, and then we've got minus 4 plus 21, and minus 4 plus 21 would be 17. So we've got plus 17. So we've written our n squared minus 4n plus 21 in another form by using completing the square, and we've got n minus 2, close bracket squared, plus 17. And if you were to expand this bracket by doing n minus 2 times n minus 2, and more expand those brackets and then add 17 you would get this so this and this is equivalent so this is just the same as this but we've just written it in another form now we want to show that every term in the sequence is positive so if we can show that this is always positive that'll be fantastic so let's look at what we've got here we've got something squared now, if we square something, it'll always be either zero or positive. So, if, for instance, if you have a positive number and you square it, you get a positive. If you've got a negative number and you square it, remember negative times a negative 
is a positive. And then if you've got a zero and you square it, you get zero. So this will always be bigger than or equal to zero. So, so that means that n minus two close bracket squared will always be bigger than or equal to zero. And the reason is if you square a negative, a negative times a negative is positive. If you square a positive, that's positive. And if you square zero, that's gonna be equal to zero. So whatever this is, it can only be either zero or positive, and that's it. It can never be negative. And then we've got add 17. So whatever this result is, if we add 17 to it, and I remember it could, the lowest number can be zero, if you add 17 to it, it will always have to be positive. So that means that n minus two, close bracket squared, plus 17 will have to be positive because the smallest number that this can take is zero. The smallest result this could be is zero. And if you add 17, it's then gonna be positive. So that is always positive. And that's it, so we've shown it. We've shown that if we started off with n squared minus 4n plus 21, we can write it in another form by doing completing the square, and we get n minus 2 close bracket squared plus 17. The n minus 2 squared bit can only be 0 or positive, so it can, or the lowest number can take a 0, so n minus 2 close bracket squared will always be either positive or 0, so we've written n minus 2 close bracket squared is bigger than or equal to 0, and then if we add 17 to it, which is what we've got, that will have to be positive, and that's it. So that means that every term in the sequence will have to be positive, and let's just write that down. And that's it, and that means that every term in the sequence would have to be positive, and that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the quadratic sequences or the quadratic nth term practice questions. I really, really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, could you please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel? If you need any extra help on quadratic sequences or the quadratic nth term, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 388, there's three video tutorials there, version one, two, and three, which go through how to solve quadratic sequences questions and how to find the quadratic nth term using three different approaches. And in this video I've used version one but you're more than welcome to use version two or version three and that's it so thanks very much cheers bye